Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining the call to give a brief update on the two-view SP24 results and address investor questions. We have with us from the management of Zagal EP Ocean Services Limited, Mr. Raj Narayanam, founder and executive chairman, Mr. Avinash Gorkinde, managing director, and Mr. Arjit Kumar, CFO. We would request the management to start with the opening comments, post which we can open the floor for Q&A. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Narayanam. Thanks, thanks, Rohan. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, happy Diwali in advance to all of you. Thank you for joining us today for Zagal Turning Calls for Q2 FY24. On behalf of the company, I extend a very warm welcome to everyone for joining us today. On this call, we are joined by Mr. Avinash Gorkinde, Managing Director and CEO, Mr. Aditya Kumar, CFO and SGAR Investor Relation Advisors. The results in the presentations are uploaded on the stock exchanges and the company website. I hope everybody has had a chance to look at it. I am pleased to share with you that your company has delivered a strong set of numbers in both Q2 and H1 uh, FI24 with revenues growing at a healthy 41% and 38% respectively on a YOY basis. Growth in adjusted EBITDA is even stronger at 79% in QY, uh, Q1 FI24 and 54% in H1 FI24. We have witnessed significant growth and transform transformative changes in our industry. The digitization wave has reshaped the way we do business. The reduction in cash usage an increase in cards and digital spends has been a prominent driver in our industry. Expense management and vendor payments along with stronger compliance requirements have been a big pain point for enterprises. Zagal through its suite of products is addressing this challenge. We are seeing a very healthy demand for these products and we are very confident that we will be able to service a large part of this demand resulting in higher growth. This would require investments in product as well as technology to be able to meet the customer expectations. Just want to highlight the spend management solutions, you know, which we provide to large corporations, brings in a level of transparency and control over expenditure that can mitigate risk, stimulate growth, boost profits, and streamline uh, operations across the organization. The securely centralized data in spent software such as our SaaS offering serves as a single, singular source of truth, enabling companies to conduct real-time spend analysis and gain insights into how the money is allocated company-wide, which generally we have seen is a challenge for large corporations. When the right system is in place, it simplifies and expedites decision-making for all our stakeholders. This shift in mindset offers a solid growth trajectory for Zagal. We have, we, we have worked very closely and we continue to work very closely with our customers to garner deep user insights. This engagement helps us to continue to diversify, enrich our offerings by exploring various use cases and aligning our strategy with an evolving marketplace. By strategically broadening our solutions, we can effectively cater to a broader spectrum of customer needs and preferences, thereby fortifying our competitive position and capturing new market segments. As an organization, we have a strong belief in partnerships and collaborations. With our Zagal integration platform, which is called Vic, we intend to have our integrations with relevant uh, ERPs, HRMSs, accounting, uh, and various other software packages. We endeavor to build symbiotic business relationships and believe in partnering with various industry players. One such example is our recent collaboration, which you would have all seen uh, you know, in the news as well as on the uh, stock exchange when we filed it, was with Kotak Mahindra Bank that represents a significant milestone for our organization. Through this strategic partnership, we will provide bundled services of corporate uh, of Kotak Bank corporate salary accounts plus employee flexi benefits disbursal on a co-branded prepaid card for employees of corporates. 
talking about some talking now i'll talk about some operating uh, matrices currently the active users on our platform is at about 2.52 million as on 30th september 2023 one of our current growth strategy is to drive growth in our recently launched product joy which is basically nothing else but a accounts payable and vendor uh, you know vendor payment product corporate face multiple challenges with vendor payments like manual invoices you know they have no visibility at branch level payments delay in payments vendor impairment and uh, you know the right choice of vendors through our zoyer product we provide a single centralized system or a platform to manage all the vendor related payments thus driving efficiency and automation at zagal we see incredible potential in the credit card market our venture into the credit card industry has unequivocally transformed our trajectory month after month our revenue from uh, you know our various sources and most of them most of them have been growing at a very healthy pace but one one particular uh, piece which i want to highlight is the credit card which continues to soar demonstrating the immense appetite for this financial tool in the market the revenue the revenue potential from credit cards is even higher and we are fully prepared to tap into this vast market the momentum that we have built in h1 of this year which is the first half year you know will be carried into h2 and we look forward to continuing this stride we expect the operating leverage which is already kicked in to further strengthen and with lower finance cost as we have repaid the debt you know should show a stellar performance in the coming uh, h2 with this i would want to thank all of you and i will ask my uh, you know md to come in and give you a give you a deeper dive into our operations and future prospects thank you so much over to avinash godkinde much raj uh, appreciate it uh, happy diwali to everyone uh, this has been a very encouraging quarter for us both in terms of performance of revenue and ebitda A notable portion of our growth in the quarter was driven by increase in spends on credit card business, along with the growth in Propel Point redemptions. Growth in adjusted EBITDA is around 78.7 percent. This is before ESOP expenses. Outpaced the growth in the top line, which is 41.4 percent. This is the result of strong operating leverage that exists in our business, and that has started to kick in uh, every quarter. Our H1 FY24 top line growth was 38% and is in line with our full year guidance of about 40 to 50% revenue growth. Since this is our second earnings call and ours is a very uniquely uh, positioned business, so I'm going to take a step back at this moment and spend some time to share more insights into our products and offerings and the overall business model. Zagal Solutions cater to the expense side of the corporate customers P&L statement encompassing three major categories these categories include employee expenses reimbursements and employee tax benefits channel incentives provided to channel partners and employee rewards and recognition as well as accounts payable platform which is Zoyer all these products are deeply embedded with our credit card and prepaid card payment instruments with the help of our embedded finance platform our customers witness improvement in their operations in their cash flow and their overall financial performance our customers who use our safe platform which is basically our employee expenses employee reimbursement employee benefits platform uh designed for uh, which where we offer convenient mobile app and dashboard Through this app, employees can instantly scan their bills and submit their expense receipts using our optical character recognition capabilities, which is OCR capabilities. Effectively, corporates can digitize their employee expenses and expense tax benefits, as well as their reimbursements, on a single payment instrument that can replace food coupons, food cards, fuel cards, travel vouchers, gift cards, and any other payment instrument that a corporate gives for employees to. incur these expenses coming to zoyer zoyer is a saas based accounts payable platform which helps in digitizing all payouts for corporates through deep integrations with erps 
and our credit card offerings. It helps corporates improve their working capital and payment efficiencies, increase visibility via analytics, and define hierarchies and authorization matrices. The platform is coupled with our credit cards, both corporate credit cards and purchase cards, which provides corporates uh, with a holistic accounts payable solution. Coming to Propel, Zagal Propel serves as a comprehensive solution for employee rewards and channel partner incentives. Through our automated rewards and recognition platform, we enhance engagement amongst both channel partners as well as employees of companies, ultimately fueling accelerated business growth. With Zagal Propel, corporations have the power to revamp their channel partner incentives and establish channel loyalty programs that foster loyalty, drive channel revenues, and bolster their profits. I will now talk about the performance of our various products along with revenue contributions in the last quarter. Program fees amounted to about 765 million, which is about 32% of our top line. This figure encompasses various revenue streams, including interchange income and incentives from networks like Visa and Rupee. At form P, the fast fee uh, stood at about 147 million, contributing to about 5% of our top line. This refers to all the fee income that we receive from our corporate customers, including fixed monthly subscription fees paid by customers on a per user basis. The Propel Points revenue stood at 1,915 million, constituting 63% of our total revenue. This is received from customers for issuing reward points, which we call as Propel Points, to their employees and their channel partners like dealers, distributors, agents, retailers, etc. We anticipate robust growth across all our revenue streams moving forward and look forward to increasing our share of program fees and SaaS fees in the coming quarters. We will continue to implement our growth strategies and we remain confident in our ability to effectively leverage our inherent strengths, ensuring growth and margin expansion. I'll now hand it over to uh, our CFO, Aditya, for financial highlights. Thank you so much. Thank you, Abhinash. Good afternoon all and uh, happy Diwali in advance. Let me walk you through our quarterly financial performance. In the past quarter, we registered an impressive 41% by year growth and 55% sequential growth in our top line. Our growth margins reduced by 2.7% on quarter on quarter basis due to increase in propel point redemption business, which is being recognized on cross basis. Having said that, our cost structures across product categories are being monitored effectively so that we are able to maintain overall EBITDA margins. Our adjusted EBITDA has grown by over 79% on by year basis and 58% sequentially to INR 218 million. During this quarter, there is increase in our employee cost, raising from INR 81 million in Q1 FY24 to INR 112 million in Q2 FY24. This uptick can be attributed to the annual salary hikes and bonuses. H1 FY24 is a better reflection of our employee cost profile. Following the recent IPO, the company has successfully repaid 470 million in borrowings, which is expected to result in reduced finance costs starting from H2. In the future, we will realize significant interest cost savings, resulting in a meaningful shift towards the profitability. Our cash pad, which includes net profit along with depreciation and ease of expenses, has surged by 94% on a by basis. During FY24, we expect to record total ease of expenses close to INR 180 million to 200 million. So speaking on H1 FY24 numbers, our revenues have soared by 38% on YYY basis to INR 302.7 crore. Our adjusted EBITDA has experienced a substantial growth of 55% to INR 65 million. Notably, our cash pack has surged by an impressive 69%. Going forward, the prospects in H2 are also looking promising due to inherent reasonability of our business, which we have spoken about in the past. Over the years, our revenue has consistently demonstrated a substantial surge during the third and fourth quarters, accounting for a substantial 60-65% of our total revenue, due to surge in transaction volume during the festive sale and increased spends driven by users seeking to maximize their card balances before the end of the financial year. On that note, I will request moderator to open the floor for Q&A.
Thank you all. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Girishama Shah from Invision Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Happy Diwali, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, I want to understand the alliance with Visa and Kotak Bank uh, better. How will this uh, 20 million dollars and 76 crores accrue to us over a period of time? So if you could explain that, uh, that should be helpful. That question mark. Avinash Desai, thank you so much for your question. And uh, so I'll take the Kotak uh, partnership first. Uh, basically, when a corporate today uh, signs up with Zagil, uh, we offer them the safe platform, which is our employee expense management, reimbursements and reward uh, and employee benefits platform. Uh, and obviously, they would have a corporate salary account from, you know, a different bank. By bundling the two, what we are basically making is that there's a common interface, a common app, a common dashboard that the corporate and the employee get. In addition, in this relationship, the way it is structured is that the bank will bear the cost of the software fees for the expense management and employee benefits. And to the corporate, effectively, if the employees are taking a Kotak Mahindra Bank best-in-class salary account, the software platform would come free of cost. Right? And that's a very powerful proposition in our view uh, because it allows uh, for rapid expansion uh, in terms of uptake. Uh, and to a corporate, they just need to uh, agree to take best in class salary account. Coming to the visa incentive, the visa incentive is uh, for forex cards. We are, in the coming quarters, going to launch our Forex prepaid cards. This dovetails beautifully with our expense management platform because when employees travel abroad, they incur expenses on the behalf of the corporate and they need to submit those bills. Now, by uh, offering that in conjunction with a Forex card, it's going to be very easy for employees to submit their expenses through our app, which has OCR, as I mentioned, and for the corporates to be able to reconcile and settle the uh, dues, if any, uh, because the corporate car, uh, the forex card also is tightly coupled with our offering. Hope that answers the question. Yeah. So, what? Uh, how will you get this twenty million dollars? Is it uh, equal in five years? Is it going to be milestone based? How it do is, you arrive at this number? Yes. So this is an estimate linked on spends, the amount of spends that get generated on the Forex card. This is an incentive. It's a uh, uh, basis the spends. It's like the Propel points that we have. This has nothing to do with Propel. This is basically that if there are so many million dollars of spends that get generated on the Forex cards, we okay. get X million dollars of incentive from Visa for driving spends to Visa ahead of other card networks. Okay, so this will accrue in the program fees then? Yes. yes. Okay. And uh, for Kotak Bank, uh, it would depend on the number of employees uh, getting onto our platform. Number of corporates and number of employees who will sign up for this specific program, we will okay. invoice the bank for the uh, SaaS fees, the software fees, and uh -huh. all the card transaction income also uh, would come as usual, which we get for our prepaid cards. And this is this fees and uh, all the arrangement is no different if we had to approach the corporate by ourselves, or it is different for Kotak Bank. So this is a bundled offering. So obviously, okay. because it's a bundled offering, so the, the 
different specifics uh, there. Um, okay. But of course, for us, the benefit is that a we are invoicing to a single uh, trusted entity yeah. like the Code Bank, uh, yeah. and secondly, you know, uh, we anticipate that the uptake would be uh, fairly significant given the value proposition to the cooperators that you get the software free. Okay. One more point I just want to add there, ma'am, is that yeah. in all our relationship with banks, you know, we were we as Zagal were the sellers of these products along with our brand partners. In this particular arrangement, the difference is that Kotak will also sell our software to their corporates. Card would be Kotak's, co-branded with Zagal, but they would be the sellers, software would be ours. So this is a two-way income generating uh, uh, program by, by which we should be able to at least see that the base of Kotak is very, very large and I think, you know, we would significantly benefit from this relationship. And it would be taken to the existing uh, Kotak customers as well. Yes, yes, yes. That's the key point, ma'am, that it will be taken to the uh, all the, you know, users and, uh, uh, you know, customer corporate relationships which Kotak has. They will take this offering to them, which is a bundled offering with Zagal. And, you know, software is Zaggles, card is a co-branded card, and together it will make a very, very, you know, good combination for any corporate to have. And again, the 76 crores is an estimate. It is not a, it may vary from one year to the other, depending on how many customers are getting on board. Yes. Contract is for three years, uh, ma'am, uh, and yeah. the 76 crores is a combined estimate across the years. So one single uh, repaid card program, which is what we have discussed. Yeah. However, the contract has the, the flexibility or the openness for us at a future date, uh, basis mutual agreement with the bank to launch other forex, uh, other uh, prepaid uh, programs as well. Okay. And also uh, the other uh, possibility is that looking at this program, you know, there could be of other banks who will approach us, you know, to enter into something very similar. So we look, uh, you know, we uh, what we see is that at least couple of more banks, you know, in next, um, uh, you know, couple of quarters should also sign up for a program like this. Because it's a win-win. They, you know, they are able to offer something extra, you know, to their customer. For us, it's a beautiful thing. Customer is also able to get all these services at a, uh, you know, from their known corporate banker. And for us, it is that, you know, our software is going into so many corporates, which also gives us an opportunity to sell something extra to those uh, corporates. Okay. Uh, th that's on the alliance. The second question is, uh, uh, I'm assuming that compared to last year, quarter two, uh, to this year, the uh, propel uh, percentage of revenues has increased and therefore the gross margins have been a little lower. Is that understanding right? Yeah. Aditya here, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Because yes. what happens in the propel platform revenue, right? Uh, the gross margins are lower, but the take rates are always higher. Okay. Okay. And the borrowing cost, will it come down by 2-3 crores in the second half compared to last year or would it be higher? It will be lower, ma'am, because we closed a couple of borrowings, so uh, obviously it will be lower compared to H2 of last year. Okay. Uh, so it will come down by 2-3 crores or it would, the quantum will be more, I mean, it's so we had around 120 crores of debt as of FI23, of which you have closed 47 crores. Quantum will so, be low by 2 to 3 crores, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Fine. Thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Deepak Poddar from Sapphire Capital. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Deepak? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, sir, uh, for the opportunity. So, first up, just I wanted to understand in terms of uh, ESOP expense. I mean, this uh, this uh, year we expect about uh, 18 to uh, or uh, around 20 crores, right, in terms of ESOP expense, and out of which I think 13, 14 crores we have already uh, incurred in the first half. So, second half only, I mean, five, six crores uh, is what we are expecting in terms of ESOP cost. Yes, correct, Deepak, your understanding is right. Around 6 crore we'll have this find out for the next two quarters. 5 to 6 crores. Yeah. And, 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 and how do we see that FI25 in terms of ESOP cost? Uh, FI25 will be much, much lower because we uh, do ESOP accounting as per India's requirements, etc. Right? Initial two years it will be at the highest side. Uh, for the FI25 and 26, both two years put together it will be around 10 crores. 10 crores total or each? Total, total 10 crores and around 7 crores in year 1 and uh, 2 and a half crores in year 2. So FI25 is 7 crores and 3 crores is FI26? Yes. So um, so, um, so what I try, I'm trying also to understand now, because now your ESOP cost will also reduce or your adjusted margins in terms of EBITDA will uh, now converge to your reported EBITDA margin, right? Uh, because of this ESOP cost uh, being minimal from, let's say, next FI25. So, yes. so, I mean, in terms of margins, so what do we aspire? Because as we as we scale up, we will get some leverage advantage as well, um, given the high growth business we are into. Uh, so, 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 what would be a steady state or aspirational margins that we 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 look uh, in our business? I mean, uh, from next two to three year perspective. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, you know, ideally, see, we should reach, uh, uh, you know, about uh, fifteen, sixteen percent overall. But you know, uh, for this year the guidance is 12 to 13 percent, and we'll you know maintain that for this year. But of course, you know there is a lot of uh, operating leverage which is available you know to us to expand our margin. Uh, so 15 to 16 percent margin is what we are looking at in two to three years time. In three years, yes. And and this 12 to 13 percent is on adjusted basis, right? Uh, we are not including the ease of yeah. cost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Understood. And I mean, we currently, I think we have, I think, what, 2,600 kind of a corporate clients? Would that be the right number? Yeah, roughly about 2,700, yeah. So how, how do we see the traction in that? I, I think uh, uh, some color in terms of uh, the traction in your uh, clients and how we are trying to expand our wings uh, in, in, in this corporate sector, yeah. So this is a very good question, you know, and that is one, one of the things which, you know, the company is continuously, uh, you know, focusing on. Uh, the cross-sell opportunity, we have multiple products and today we see that our cross-sell percentage is roughly about, you know, 14 and a half, 15%. Now we want to take this 14 and a half, 15% to about, you know, 25% by next year. The, when I say next year, it is like, uh, uh, you know, uh, September of uh, uh, FI24 is what I'm saying. That by then we should be able to take this to, you know, increase it by another 10%. And we are constantly trying to see that how much how much more can we accrue from the same customer, because you know already our CAC is given in, and you know we have already cracked into the account. Now what more can we sell to them is the idea. So you know the, the current traction is just absolutely phenomenal right now, and we what we expect is in at least for next two three years, you know whatever visibility and the demand projections we are seeing, it looks very very healthy. Okay. Uh, so, so in terms of cross sell, uh, so so can you elaborate more on the cross sell? So, what exactly we are trying to cross sell? Uh, sure. Is it the forex card we are talking about here, or or what else? Could be, could be like for example, I'll just take a hypothetical example of uh, uh, you know HCL. Okay, so in HCL, mm -hmm. yeah. providing them expense management. Until today, we were not giving them any forex uh, you know card solution, or we were not giving them the you know accounts payable vendor automation system, which is Zoya. Okay, now we would look forward to seeing that, you know, now that you're, you're, they are already buying our expense management, how can we bundle the Forex card as well as our vendor payment, payment or accounts payable platform into uh, HCL so that we can streamline their uh, 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 payable payments. Understood. So, so, so I understood this point. Uh, it's, it, uh, that this is one avenue of growth in terms of your increasing your um, uh, debt in, in a particular client, right? Uh, but I was also trying to understand how will you, uh, how are you trying to increase the, uh, I mean, um, the number of clients and uh, the width of the client that we have. If you, if you look at our revenue growth drivers, what are the revenue growth drivers? One is 
the more number of corporates I add, okay, that is how, you know, my revenue will grow. Second is, if the users within that corporate gets added, that is when my revenue goes up, okay. Third is, that if there are more number of solutions I can sell to a corporate, is when my revenue goes up. Fourth is, the amount of spend which the users do on the cards, is when my revenue goes up. These are four levers for us. And we work on all of these four levers to continuously see that how do we grow our business. Now, now to your question that how would we grow, uh, you know, add more corporates. See, for us, adding a corporate is much, much easier. Okay, it is not a very difficult task for us to add corporates. But to be able to, uh, you know, generate more income per corporate is what we are looking at. You know, which typically is called, you know, ARPE, which is average revenue per enterprise. How do we go and increase the average revenue from a uh, enterprise? So that is what we focus, that is what is the core focus because we already have 2700, 2800 clients and you know even if we take it to 3200, 3500 that is, you know, that is not at all a tough task for us. Understood. The, uh, the, uh, that's a nice explanation. Uh, and my one more query I was trying to look at in terms of regulatory risk. Yeah. I mean, um, how do you see that? I mean, tomorrow if some adverse uh, um, RBI rule comes or something on, on those lines, so how do we see regulatory risk in our business? So, like, uh, you see, if you see RBI regulation, on what will it come? Yeah, now, they see, in my opinion, uh, they cannot ask us to stop selling software, okay? Mm -hmm. the, the, the biggest risk and the only risk which is there is that in terms of... Uh, the interchange risk on the prepaid card. Now, because we have already launched our credit card, the risk is significantly mitigated, and at any given point of time, we can actually, you know, completely move everything in our business from prepaid to credit card, you know, given like about three weeks now. Earlier time was about six to eight weeks, but now we are so ready, uh, you know, ourselves that any any point of time something like that were to come, we would easily be able to manage it. Okay, and so, so what you're trying to say is that uh, majorly our risk could be in the prepaid card, right? So that that's where the RBI could intervene or or some adverse uh, regulation might come in. But since now we we have launched credit card, we can shift this entire business of prepaid card to credit card, and and our risk is kind of a mitigated, right? So so is my understanding correct? Yes, absolutely. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I think yeah, that's it from my side, sir. Oh, I, I think all the very best to you. Yep, thank you. Thank you, and happy Diwali to you. Sir. Yeah, happy Diwali to you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Bangadia from Lucky Investment Manager. Please go ahead. Thank you for taking my question, sir. Uh, congratulations on a very good set of numbers. Just one question. If you could help me with the throughput that you had for your uh, debit card, credit card, prepaid card, put together. Hi, hi, Rahul. Uh, congratulations to you too as well. Uh, didn't, didn't understand the question. Can you please repeat? The throughput, the value throughput that happened through your debit, credit, and prepaid cards for the quarter. So, how much money would have been spent using using your cards? So that that's a, a fairly significant number, uh, Rahul. But uh, wouldn't want to necessarily go into the specific uh, details. But you you see the program fees and you know the take rates there. The last year take rate was one point eight five. So we will we'll work that way backward itself. Right? That, that that take rate hasn't changed. Take rate has re remained in the same uh, range. Okay. Okay. ठीक है थैंक यू सो मच अविनाश थैंक यू थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ कार्ती फ्रॉम सुएस एडवाइजर प्लीज गो एड yeah uh, good afternoon uh, i hope you would not mind if i ask a couple of very basic questions uh, uh, one uh, just trying to understand in terms of exclusivity of arrangements with corporates uh could there be a competing solution offered uh, to the same corporate uh, how exactly does the arrangement work with your corporate clients kathi so thank you for your question uh, what happens sir is our value proposition to a corporate is a unified card app and dashboard 
See, because we integrate in many cases with their ERP, we get project codes, cost codes, location codes, and we are able to give a very holistic view to the corporate as to for that particular location, for example, what are the kind of spends that are happening, right? Mm-hmm. Or for that particular project or that particular department, uh, what are the kind of spends that are happening across, you know, whether it's employee expenses, whether it's, you know, any vendor payments that they are making or any other uh, rewards, etc. right? So the whole thesis is that it's a unified platform, single sign-on, very easy to use, a mobile app. And hence, you know, we anticipate in the coming uh, years, more and more corporates would uh, take the full suite of our offerings. Uh, We don't try to enforce uh, any exclusivity per se with our corporate customers because we do genuinely believe that our platform is best in class and we compete on merit uh, against our competitors. Right, right, right. Interesting. So, if you have to give me a ballpark estimate of what would be the current penetration of such solutions in India, probably. Very difficult to estimate, right, Karthi? Today, a uh, lot of companies are still on, uh, you know, uh, Excel and email, right? Uh, yeah. And that's what we are trying to solve for. In, I'll give you an example. Let's say there was an expense that was approved uh, three years ago. There's a query that comes in from any of the authorities saying, what's this expense? Why was this approved? Uh, I know of a lot of companies who end up having to restore mailboxes uh, yeah. Because the employee could have quit, right? Yeah. And trying to figure out who approved, why was he approving it the way he was, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All that inefficiency, all that uh, uh, you know, challenges that companies face, we make it seamless. Uh, we make it at a click of a button. You click at the expense. Not only do you get to know who approved, you also get to know the, all the uh, communication that happened between this person. And anyone else who was involved, let's say the employee has made the submission, any other, you know, finance team, uh, as to what was the discussion that happened around why this approval was given, right? right? So everything is at a click of a button sitting on the cloud for years and years and years uh, so that it's seamless for the corporate to be able to respond to any of these queries. Sure, sure. So, so uh, one question on uh, ROE evolution. You know, I, I understand scale plus profitability will drive ROE. So, at what stage would you reach, say, mid to late teens kind of an ROE number, or is that too aspirational? The second part to it is: Do you make a clear make a distinction between the variable part of your revenues, which is to say spent link, versus the fixed fee part of your business, and and how do you how do, how should one think about these two components? So, Kathy, I'll take the second one first. Uh, if you look at uh, our view of our revenues, it's a bundled, holistic platform. And as I uh, gave the example of the Kotak partnership, there we are now bundling uh, effectively the income that we would generate uh, by selling a Kotak Mahindra Bank salary account as well. Right. So, it's a third-party product in some ways. And yes. not only our co-branded prepaid card and the software fees, we are also earning a commission from the bank for uh, selling the salary account, right? Right. Uh, to these employees. So we take a holistic view on the uh, nature of the revenues because the corporate also looks at it th- that way, right? Sure. They are saying, okay, if this is the kind of volumes that are getting generated, then uh, you know we will potentially uh, look at how much fixed fees we need to incur as a cost. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, but 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 doesn't it vary across? One is of course, uh, uh, say for example, uh, uh, an employee account is a one-time uh, fee income. Uh, c- credit card spends, for example, would be uh, e- transaction link, right? And of course, uh, you know the SaaS services is a is a more recurring kind of thing. So therefore, I was trying to understand uh, how you uh, uh, you know uh, break it down in your mind about uh, from an ROE perspective. So. Yes, sir. so the SaaS fee, of course, has a, a large uh, recurring uh, angle to it. The program fees also is recurring because people keep spending on their uh, cards and, you know, every time they spend, we earn. Uh, similarly, on the propel points, every time somebody makes a redemption of that point uh, for vouchers of various brands, we again earn uh, our commissions there. Uh, so there is a recurring angle to... Uh, 
each one of these, uh, and that's 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 the way we have sort of tried to design the business model. Uh, quickly, uh, one. Uh, when do you think a, a high teams ROE is possible? I at least I would not want to venture into a speculatory response. Sir. Uh, we are working towards it. Right. And one last quick question: uh, Would this cover temp staff also, or does it largely cover only organized uh, employees on the roles? So our cost. You're talking of our employee costs, or uh, no? I'm talking about the customer side. Customer side. Customer is a construction customer company, customer. for example, which employs a lot of anybody who submits an expense to the company, right? It could be bench sure. staff, it could be third-party payroll, it could be delivery boys. We have some of the largest uh, food delivery companies uh, in the country. Uh, uh, the biggest ones are, uh, you know, now our customers, uh, uh, we've signed them up recently, right? And a lot of them are their delivery boys. So this is not just your uh, uh, white-collared, sophisticated employees on the company base, but it could be a, a blue-collared worker as well, a third-party payroll. Sure, sure. Thanks for answering patiently. Very best wish. Thank you, sir. And happy Deepavali. Happy Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Lalit Dev from Equarest Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon, sir, and happy Diwali in advance. So, just I have a uh, couple of questions. Uh, firstly, uh, so like you mentioned on the Kotak partnership, so just wanted to understand like how will the profitability differ uh, vary in the custom, with the customers which we source through this Kotak Bank partnership as, as compared to the uh, customers which we source directly? So in this case, if the bundled solution is taken by the corporate and we are making the sale, we earn the fees for selling the salary account, we earn the software fees for the save platform, and we earn the interchange uh, which is part of the program fees, right? So you have multiple revenue streams. The newer stream that is popping up here is the commission that we get for selling the salary account. In the case when the bank, let us say the bank goes ahead and sells, uh, in that case, of course, we don't get the uh, fees for the salary account sale. But, of course, the beauty of that model is uh, a bank has thousands and thousands of ten thousand, tens of thousands of employees who can sell our solution to their, their you know, uh, prospects. So, so, so just wanted to understand. So, in a way, like this partnership is much more profitable than the than than the one which we where we source customers directly. Is it right to say that? Yes, yes. yes. Right. Earlier, we used to earn in two ways: program fees and uh, software fees. Now you have a third leg which is kicking in, which is uh, uh, the fees that we get from the bank for sourcing a salary account. Awesome. So, sure. It is a highly, highly profitable deal because no effort from our side when a bank sells, okay, and they are the ones who will sell the software as well as the card. So we get, you know, extra income just because of the relationship and usage of our software. So that's a highly, highly accretive uh, deal for us. Sure, sir. And so second question is like, uh, so, to, so like we have mentioned that uh, like 60 to 65% of our revenue comes in the second half of the year. Now this year, uh, like the entire festive season has been on the th uh, is in the third quarter. So, ca so how has been the initial business trends in this quarter, and what kind of tra traction are we seeing right now? So, I will not go into specifics, sir, but uh, the trend continues as we have seen in all these past years. The trend continues, and we uh, we are getting good uh, traction, very good traction. And see, we have already given the guidance of. Uh, you know, 40 to 50 percent growth on the on the top line and 11 to 13 percent of it. Right, so I think we will be able to maintain it. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Mitesh Kamdar from Aditya Equity Investment. Please go ahead. Hello. 
had one question so as, the cash, yeah. as the cash flow from our operations is negative uh when can we expect that we our dependence on the external capital to generate revenues to go away to uh, this is largely an account of uh, last quarter and department etc what we do on the trade receivable right maybe we are working on it possibly in the next uh, one year we'll be able to uh, maintain that level of uh, positive working capital okay but uh, will, will the further growth require any external uh, requirement from capital from the outside sources because our own cash generation is going to be negative uh, as of now no we leverage the ex- existing uh, whatever capital is available and uh, will make sure that operational fixed leverage kick in is already started so that will help us to make our operational working capital positive okay thank you thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and want to ask a question. The next question is on the line of Agam Shah, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi sir. So, quick question: As you explain the deal of quota and visa card, Agam Shah, uh, can you please come closer to the speaker? Yeah, am I audible now? Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, you explain the quota deal. So, just wanted to know. So, seventy six crore is a number. So this number we keep on increasing, right? So end of the day, the 76 crores is the number that we have estimated uh, from the income that we will generate as uh, program fees uh, for the three years. This is the revenue projection for one program. We have not because the contract that we submitted was only the co-brand contract. We have not uh, uh, included in that the income that we get from the software fees and the income that we would get from the sale of uh, the quotax salary accounts and yeah as the multiple programs get launched through this contract uh, those get added and as the, the you know the program expands we hope that you know this is while the initial signing duration is 3 years you know we would we would hope in the that that would get extended and uh, you know we would you know have more uptake in the coming years So, so typically, let's say in a in a given year, uh, you don't acquire more corporate customers. So, uh, still we can maintain the growth of forty percent, or this will drop drop to twenty percent, or how to look at that way? See, our cross sell opportunity is very very significant. As Raj previously mentioned, uh, we are at about fourteen uh, odd percent right now. In the next year, we are looking to get to twenty five percent. uh our opportunity to be able to bundle these sort of solutions and then sell that is also available for us so uh typically it is uh, you know and a corporate that we sign up today takes about 3 to 5 years to mature in terms of the overall uh, revenue uh, output that can be generated right uh so so it's not that the growth is a concern for this year but you know you need that uh, a decent uh, pipeline of corporates getting signed up year on year for the coming years so that you know the, we continue to grow not only uh, this year at about 40 to 50% but in the future also we have robust growth but just a ballpark if i have to take if i don't sign any corporate customer so uh, the business current business itself can grow at least 20 25% right with the current corporate clients So there is tremendous opportunity sir as i said the cross sell is only to 15% right uh, and if we uh, just focus on that there is tremendous opportunity for growth yes you're right okay okay that's it from my side i'm joining the queue thank you a reminder to all the participants you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of shriram an individual investor Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I have a couple of questions. One is, you know, how much is the interchange fee for the first half? And uh, also, if you can throw some light on what is the other component of the program fee? I mean, you have mentioned that you receive some kind of fees from the banking partners. So, what is the arrangement there? And if you can help me with the nature of income, that would be helpful. Uh, my second question is on the proper side of business. 
now earlier you used to report on a in day basis now uh, which has now changed so let's take fy21 you had reported 30 crores now what is this number for 22 and 23 Sir, on the propel points, we are reporting on the basis of indices. Uh, okay. That is what we are doing right now, uh, and so I don't didn't understand where the confusion is. No, no. Uh, what is the pre-indices number? The pre-indices number was insignificant, sir. Sorry. So, uh, so let's take one fifty-four and three sixty is your. 22 and 23 revenue so sir in the number you know yeah uh, oh so yeah, this now in the case and the current reporting is also on indias for these numbers sir no no uh, i am saying can you give the comparable figure uh, maybe I'll, i'll take this question sir so uh, all the labs so we we migrated from icap to indias uh, from fy20 onwards whatever numbers you see in the financials are disclosed under indias okay so just to answer side to your question so fy21 uh, propel platform revenue is 32 crore as against the cost of propel point you see the direct expenses line item on the face of the pnl okay you just need to reduce that so that gives you around 2 crore for fy22 it is around 10 crore for fy23 it is around 45 crore the next exactly, uh, yeah yeah exactly exactly so so that is where i'm coming from so this 2 crore to 40 crore uh, it's like how, how should we uh, look at this i mean there's a Large jump. So and then for the H1 again we are at 20 crores. So uh, may maybe we are meeting the similar run rate. So how should we look at this in the future? So that's by design, sir. We are focusing on uh, increasing the propel platform revenue, etc. So what we are doing is whenever we get the uh, contract from the corporates, right? Rather than going for network cuts, we are uh, making sure that they use the platform and redeem the catalog of the vouchers by the users. It's increasing on the user pro- propel uh, adaptability. okay so answer on the my first question on the interchange fee uh, the value for the first half so so generally the program fee largely it consists of interchange fee only sir around 90 to 93% will be the interchange fee and rest all other line items like incentives etc will comprise the other portion so we also won't be able to go into too much of specifics sir because these are very specific uh, you know uh, contracts or arrangements that we have with our partner banks etc and this is a little bit proprietary in nature okay so the, actually the last year uh, the number was 72% actually the, that's what you have reported i mean the component of interchange fee to program fee if i do that math 72 so so again now it has uh, reverted back to old levels you are saying 90% yes right yes Okay, and what is the other fee that you get, sir? What is the nature of that income? Can you explain that? Sir, as I, I think as Aditya mentioned, the fees include a combination of incentives that we get from networks, any support that we get from uh, our partner banks to drive spend, uh, and any other you know fees that you could have, like a uh, on the card you may have certain fees like a you know fuel surcharge, etc. Uh, or ATM uh, fee etc. So those are the kind of fees that are included there. Oh, okay, okay. And so on the interchange part again. Uh, let's take. Uh, I don't want any numbers. Uh, so let's take hundred rupees is the interchange fee. Okay. So how, how much is basically shared with the banks? I just want to know the pie. Like how much do the banks take and how much does Rabi take? An overall so number would do. Here is everything that we take, right? so what we are including here is only our part we don't gross it up with the total interchange uh, we don't do that so what we are reporting is the net interchange that comes or net payout that comes to us right uh, already we are factoring it in uh, different banks different arrangements sir uh, that's how uh, that whole thing goes for example the arrangement that we have with uh, kotak mahindra bank uh, there where the visa fees the, the rupee fees are taken by the bank that the switch costs are taken by the bank uh, there it's a 80 20 sharing right uh, so 80% zagal 20% bank right yes, 
ഓക്കെ ദിസ് ഹെൽപ്ഫുൾ സർ താങ്ക് യു